Got to get this centered right. <laughs> uh, it is, uh, well, zero hours. It's, it's just 21 minutes into the 14th day of May uh, 2021. And we're continuing on with our vlog. This is the way we do things. And uh, I got back in around 11 o'clock, did some gaming, watched some uh, Lionel Nation uh, to sort of see what he has to say. I'm doing the analysis of the analyst. And it, 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 it strikes me, because I, I talked about this on the ride home in terms of uh, the sense of history, that we always look at things in the present tense, and in many cases, even the intellectuals who have their own sense of self in terms of who they are and what they know, uh, often ignore history. And they, 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 they don't go into the details they should go into. Even if they mention, they say, well, it was not an issue about Jewish, Jewish this or Jewish that, or or about a particular group or not a particular group. They don't really go into the details. They will use certain aspects of things to their own particular advantage and leave out other... They, they, in other words, he was talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and always brings up the point that Israel has the right to defend himself, but he uses it in, in roundabout terms. He doesn't come out directly and say that. But... He puts it, well, what would you do in this situation? And it is, the thing is, is that he doesn't see the politics behind it. He doesn't see how these situations are created by politicians. They're created by people who have, who, who have control to prevent this stuff. But because of the way the media works, and this is the TV show I was watching last night with my parents, or actually a few hours ago with my parents, how the media historically has always twisted, twisted things to its own sense of self. And this includes this whole concept of social justice warrior. You think you, the social justice warrior was new, but in the 1800s they were called the reformers. And their their leader was Voltaire. And it was about, it, it, well Voltaire was earlier, but their the, 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 I. Uh, their sort of their their icon, the person that they followed after was Voltaire, uh, and this is where Dostoevsky comes into the equation because this is when he was right. This was when he was an intellectual, but he sort of saw through everything and realized a large chunk of the people who were writing this stuff who sort of inflamed the sense of social justice, the sense of right and sense of wrong, sort of creating a new morality, attacking the churches and stuff like that for their their lack of sense in terms of what's right and what's wrong, in, in, in the nature that, as the church became was the authorities, and they became the authority, and this was not all Christian churches, this was specifically the Church of England, this was the uh, papacy, and a large chunk of the churches that derived from these things all had a sense of propriety, uh, of propriety that... Uh, stated they were the authorities, that they set what was right and what was wrong. And a large chunk of the time they took what was what they thought was due to them. And a lot of times these these, these dues depended on your station, how important your station was, and how important that they thought they were. But there were others in there who didn't have these sense, who had the sense of fairness, who, as they say, had a Christian sense. Uh who were in many cases ignored by the social justice warriors and attacked along, along the lines of those who were quite greedy, who, who took more than, they sh more than they should have simply because they felt they had an entitlement to this particular uh, treatment, the wealth, the, the share of uh, whatever was there in terms of money, in terms of uh, of lodgings, and so on and so forth. Even if they did call themselves the humble servant, they, in many cases, became a master. And it, it, it's ironic because the deacons, who often see, see themselves as part of the authorities, 
The deacons themselves, if you look at the original term of deacon, means waiter. They serve the spiritual food. They serve, they, they're to serve the people. But in, in the sense of the civil servant, they become the bureaucracy. They're part of the clerisy. And they can be as abusive as any uh, bureaucratic, uh, any any high level bureaucrat who has a particular a particular status. And all of it is based on intellectual prowess, the intelligence, the intellectual uh, capacity of the individual. And it's the same particular view that you'll find with Lionel LeBron as an intellectual where they have a sense of self above all others. This is something that's typical, but it's ne it's never brought out, it's never analyzed. Uh, even though he goes and analyzes other people, it's only to, it's always to his own standards. And this is not necessarily something bad because they could they could point out some very good points, but when you understand where he's coming from, what his sense is, you begin to realize that it's not always altruistic. It's not there simply f to bring out information, but he's there to create a brand. He's there to create an identity. He's there to create a story, to bring in a crowd. In other words, there is an entertainment aspect of this. There's a, aspect, there's a self aggrandizement uh, uh, aspect of things. And so... He does things in these veins, in those in, in those veins. And as much as you may have thought this was something new, this was in a TV show, I think it was 1975, 1980, uh, from the BBC, set in the 1800s, and the exact same thing pops up that we see now in terms of social justice. It comes out uh, back then. From you know, it, And this is why Dostoevsky becomes such an important read, is that uh, a large chunk of the sense of social justice the, the reformers have been around since the 1800s and even earlier. So, I mean, that's that, that's how you get that's how you get the the American Revolution. The American Revolutions were led in 1776 were led by reformers who didn't want to be controlled by a king. This is the nature. This is the nature of uh, uh, the American Constitution. It's about individual freedom, individual sovereignty. But anyways, on to the uh, on to the YouTube stroll. I didn't expect to be back so soon, but I am. Uh, um, finished the bag of chips already. Uh, I'm gonna have some chocolate chips. I like these as well as the, as the chocolate bar. Uh, I got up to. Uh, I just finished. Uh, the Leroy's, and I was thinking about something. I went and checked it out. Lionel had an issue with the term "home," so I went and looked it up. I don't use uh, Google; I use DuckDuckGo. And here it is: uh, home. Just to show you that it is real. If we can get uh, a uh, a shot of this, okay. I'll probably put this. I'll probably put this up on. Uh, I'll probably put a picture of it either, either here, or probably on the other side. Probably probably put it up here. I'll take an, a, an image of this. Basically, home a fine uh, ground, a fine grind, um, whetstone uh, for a keen edge uh, cutting. To in other words, you want to sharpen, you want to uh, uh, create a precision. A tool uh, with a, ro a rotating ab abrasive uh, tip for a large, uh, enlarging holes to precise dimension. In other words, it's about precision. And they have it here is, you know, they have 
uh, to move or advance towards a target or goal. Missiles honed in on the military installation. And this is what the, he was talking about. Talking about the missiles. He says not honed. He says homing. Well, no, it's honed. It's right here. I sent them a little email uh, with this uh, search. I don't expect him, uh, him to acknowledge this, but uh, he's a person who uh, really gets into definitions and if it doesn't suit what he needs or what he wants, well, your definition is wrong, your use is wrong, and he'll make an issue of it. I'm not a person who does this. I'm not a person who... I have, I have an interest in the dictionary, but I also look at the history of dictionaries. Because words will come into fashion and out of fashion. The pe words are used by people uh, from one generation to another generation to, to another generation. They have different meanings. So the dictionary is a book that, or a tool that tells you, as in terms of a historical record, how people use the word. Diction is how you use the word. It's not that, it's not the definition of a word. It's how you use the word. And this is how the definition definition actually comes about is that because you're defining it within the use of a particular sentence or in a particular phrase or or even in a particular context it could be there, there could be different definitions uh, and this is true for Greek and for for most other languages you have a context in which something is defined but again this detail is not gone into by Lionel he doesn't do this he doesn't get into this. He says he does more of it on his, on his page site called lionelmedia.com. Uh, but I'm not, I don't know whether he does that or not because I'm not going to go pay for that. Uh, all, everything he does uh, for, under, for, under a page site, I do here for free. So it's your cho choice, him or... or, or you know, I don't have to choose. You can choose. If you want to pay, go pay. If you don't want to pay, well, and you want something more, there's, some, there's something more here. But the thing is, you have to do the homework. You have to do the studying. You have to do the reading. If you're not going to read Dostoevsky, you're not going to really understand a large chunk of what's going on because everything is framed within the context of Dostoevsky. A larger context is, is the context of, uh, of the Holy Roman Empire. Go and look at the history. Look at the history of the papacy. You'll find there's a massive context there uh, that impacts on today. Uh, Today's events. But if, again, as if you're not willing to sit down and do the research, and this is what QLARP is about, LARP is a nerd gaming where you do a, a, a lot of studying. I mean, all you have to do is look at Dungeons, 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 and, Dra <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons. It's a massive game, very nerdy, because you have to do a lot of mathematics, you have to do a lot of studying, and there's a lot to the game itself. So, if you're not into that nerdy stuff, then this is not going to be the game for you. Hularp isn't going to be the game for you. Maybe cho choose like something like uh, uh, Call of Duty, something like that. You know, some of these the, 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 the person versus person single point shooter games. They'll last for a couple hours, but th that's about it. This is more long term. It's more of a strategy game. And sometimes things go quickly, but more often than not, they go very slowly. Well, it is definitely summer now that you see the short sleeves here. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, let's see, it's 22 hours and 45 minutes into uh, May 15th. Uh, this is Saturday. And I do enjoy uh, the time at my parents' house. So. In addition to, in addition to uh, the dinners, uh, we also... Uh, Watch some of the TV shows that we have in com that we like in common, uh, and they're older TV series. This was not again 1982 uh, with Nigel Hawth Hawthorne in it, and it's along the line. It's ironically enough along the lines of uh, Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister, but this time it's set in the Church of England, uh, 18, just around 1850, around that time. They're just sort of in the uh, latter half of the Victorian era. And it, it, it pretty much falls along with the whole sen thing of sense and sensibility. If you uh, know of Jane Austen and and the and and the writings of Jane Austen, 
you'll find a lot of the attitudes very similar in these in these uh, in these shows. And I talk about particularly in light with uh, Lionel LeBron. If you want to sort of watch Lionel Nation and give a comparison to how he discusses things and how I discuss things, and he rarely ever goes into that much history. He expects you to know the history and, and, and does a very little expanding on uh, the topic that he's in. Uh, and this is what I talked about on on the uh, on the scooter ride home. It's, it's in the ride vlog to some de some degree. And it's the attitude in the senses and sensibilities of the intellectual class. This was a class who were upper middle class. They were often well to do. Typically. Uh, they were lawyers, they were writers, they were a number of people within society uh, who were able to get the education that they needed, uh, not necessarily through a, what they call a public system, or what they call the, fa uh, the factory classroom system, but rather uh, very small, intimate, uh, sort of privately paid tutorships. Tutoring was not simply to help a person who was struggling with whatever. Uh, tutors were the teachers. They were the masters. They were the ones who brought reading and writing into the house. They're the ones who brought literacy into the house. And of course every house at, at that time, uh, no matter how large or how small, uh, had to have a library. And this is where the tutor, uh, sort of, the, the tutor's domain was in the library, sort of expounding upon the books that they were there, providing, you know, insight to what education was, to what literacy was, and to what was proper and what was not proper, what was the sense and sensibility of the, the, the proper uh, uh, intellectual, the intellectual standing. And this comes out in, in, in the Broadchester, Bron, uh, Broadchester, uh, Broadchester Chronicles, this comes out in Yes, and yes, yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister, how the approach to various issues of the day, and they do not differ from the issues of today. Matter of fact, a large chunk of the roots of what we see going on today can be seen in these particular uh, uh, these episodes, these uh, uh, TV series, and the, the episodes within the TV series. And you can see a lot parallel between a lot of the, the the characters that were there and the characters that we have today. Like, well, let's call Lionel LeBron a character. A large chunk of the attitudes that you see lawyers and people who have dealings with words, who have a sense of literacy, will twist and turn the literacy in such a manner that in the conversation, without getting necessarily upset or angry, they will use particular terms and words in politeness. Uh, to be, in many cases, be underhanded to... Uh, uh, create a sly or a slight uh, to really cut somebody. And this, these were were basically verbal jousts. Well, the, the brute and barbarian cut with knives and sword used their cutlery uh, to do such dealings. It is the, 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 the ultimate intellectual cuts and achieves the same thing in terms of personal injury with the words alone. The words alone become the sword, become the knife, become the weapon of choice. And as how the word is, is how the how the wording is used, the diction, the the phrasing is what punctuates and underscores what is being said. And you, In some cases, if you want to sort of trick somebody into doing something, you will compliment them and you will provide a, a, a less than honest explanation of something they don't understand, assuring them on your integrity that, that this is indeed true. Although, of course, because they'll never understand, because they don't understand, they have a, don't have the sense of literacy that you do, you can then take advantage and, and get things that ordinarily you wouldn't get. And you see the characters in there, like you can sort of see the goings on, you can sort of see the dealings, but at the same time, you can also sort of see the things where they will won't discuss, the things they will discuss, 
the boundaries of where the discussion goes. And you can sort of see that with Lionel LeBron. You can see what he discusses, what he won't discuss, where his boundaries are. And you can sort of, you, you can place this sort of character analysis very well within Lionel LeBron and Lionel Nation. Because there's actually, there's actually something there with Lionel LeBron and Lionel, his initial Lionel Nation. But I'm sure, you, you know, you could do this with uh, Joe Rogan. You can do this with a number of other characters, even like Alex Jones has his own little shtick to the whole thing. He, and when it, once, it, once you're going outside, Lionel, Lionel LeBron is, goes, goes back to the old school, goes back to the old literature, uh, to the old sensibilities of, of, of diction and wording. He, that's where he, his play is. That's where his thing is. Alex Jones, ta Alex Jones takes it out of the intellectual sphere and brings it down to the, what we call the common man. It brings it into the bar room. And the bar, so Alex Jones approaches things from the barroom perspective. So, and this is what sort of gave entry to Joe Rogan, is who, who does the same thing, is that, is that he comes in from the barroom perspective and brings in what we'll call complex issues into the area, area, area <clears throat> the areas uh, that most Americans never, and most people in general never get into. The general public, although they have intrigue, do not have the intrigue on the level of an intellectual. The, the, the intellectual has a, has, has a complete, completely different view. Unfortunately, we have to make a description, a, a sort of a, a note, a discrepancy here is that the intellectual of today is not the intellectual who was an intellectual in the 1980s and before. There is a sharp, beginning in the 1990s, there was a sharp disconnect from anything historical, from really any, called the sort of the sense and sensibilities of pre-1990, uh, aren't there in the, in, in the current set of intellectuals. Current set of intellectuals are very shallow in terms of their understandings, in terms of how history evolves. And I'm not talking about textbook history. And this is the whole thing is you have to explain them. There's more than just textbook history. It's more than just your grades. It's more than what you, oh, I got an A in history. I am great at history. No. We're talking about the history that is not within the textbook. It is not the approved history. But yes, but it is still fundamental to understanding not what history is, but why history occurred. It is getting into the meat of things, the mechanisms of human behavior. This is what history should be, but most history isn't that, and most people today, history is, well, I was before I was born. And of course, that just sort of knocks the wind out of any discussion, because if that's the level of intellect that you have, oh, that's that before I was born, or you have the other phrase that I, that I absolutely adore, it's all good, it's all good. You can't have a discussion with it's all good, because there is no other other opinion there. And this typically the one who, who who said it's all good, they'll come back at you in terms of a discussion, but they'll be quoting from all these different people. And they can do nothing more than quote. And which quoting is nothing more than paraphrase. It's taking somebody else's words and sort of reflect and, and repeating them back. They're a parrot. You say something from your own understanding, from your own research, and they'll parrot back uh, something else from somebody else's mind. They will not know how to engage the thought directly from their own perspective. And so then it devolves in, it's all good, it's all good. Or, that was before I was born. <laughs>